Growing the game of golf from the bottom up instead of the top down. What if the problem with golf is not that it costs too much, is too difficult and takes too long? What if the solutions are not bigger holes, less holes, or discounting? Maybe it's much, much simpler than that. When I first started in the golf business, I was at a golf course my grandfather built in 1971. In those days, the old adage, if you build it, they will come, worked. I remember the story of my grandmother collecting green fees in her enclosed front porch. The lineup was so long that at the time, she was charging $3 for a nine-hole green fee. It was taking so long that at one point, she turned around the line and said, that's it, from now on, everyone else is $4. Everybody laughed and paid the extra dollar. Look, we all know the story. Over the years, more and more golf courses got built to try and keep up with demand. Over time, though, more golf courses were built than golfers actually needed. Golf revenues finally started declining as more golf courses opened, but less people got into the game. Well, let's rephrase this for a second. There was not enough golfers being developed to cover the increase in supply. One of these statements is an excuse, the other one is actually the solution. As golf rounds at individual golf courses decreased due to golfers playing less and leaving the game, golf courses responded by offering discounts to try and steal more golfers from other courses. It's important to really think about this. The pool of golfers is shrinking, and our solution as golf course owners is to lower our prices and try and get more golfers to come to our facilities. Then we get sold in the fallacy that if we lower our prices during our slower times, we will be able to fill our tee sheets. Have the rest of your tee sheets filled up? How has this been working for everyone? Even though golf courses knew that the golfer pool was getting smaller, they didn't respond by trying to grow the golfer pool. We have started a project in the Barrie area to try and reverse this trend. During our first stakeholders meeting, and that read owners and GMs, we did a survey about the services that courses had available. Only 46% of the courses in attendance had any sort of learn the game of golf programs. I'd like to say that there's a small chance that this could be part of the issue. A few of us golf course owners had gotten so frustrated about the state of the industry, we decided to get together and discuss what we could do. The first meeting went a long ways to just build relationships with each other. The second meeting was with a smaller group and was focused on the golf and schools program. We all decided this would be a great initiative to start rebuilding golf and something we could help each other achieve. Five golf course owners left the meeting agreeing to each sponsor two schools and have someone go into each school two times over the course of the winter to run the program. We also recognized, hey, we didn't all have someone on staff to run the program. So we agreed to share, as a paid service, someone from another club to help us run the program. We believe that if golf courses start working together, with the focus on growing the game, then the pool of golfers will start to increase. If the pool of golfers increases, then all golf courses benefit. Focus on the kids and the female golfers. Sponsor school make regular visits to the schools to introduce golf into the classroom. Right now, kids learn soccer, basketball, volleyball, track and field, baseball. Well, hey, why not add golf as well? The school's not going to do that on their own, though. It's our responsibility as golf course owners to step up and make that happen. We need to add more junior programs to our golf courses. We need to add ladies' learning opportunities to our golf courses. We know that not all golf courses can afford full-time golf teachers. That's a big issue. But that's also where we need to work together to grow the game. Every facility that creates a new golfer does not only create a new golfer for their own facility, they create it for the golf industry. Quoting Abraham Lincoln, the best way to predict your future is to create it, and it's our responsibility as owners to create our futures. From one owner to another, that's what I'm asking you to do. Drop down the walls between the golf courses. Understand who the real competition is. The real competition is any other sport or activity that competes for people's time and money. Let's increase communications between facilities. Let's work together to grow the game of golf and our businesses along with it. Look, the solution is simple. Teach more people the game of golf. That is something you can control. If you focus on the things you can't control like the number of courses and the prices other courses are charging, you're not going to win this battle.